do you join us from the Circuit de Barcelona Catalunya for the first day of Formula One pre-season testing and we've had all of the cars out on track apart from the Williams of course and we've also seen the launch of a brand new car today it's the Racing Point and uh, well it's a team that Gary Anderson my special guest here knows very very well it used to be the Jordan team of course now Gary you've been having a look at the Racing Point RP19 what are the main things that you've seen from the team so far? Well, yeah, I had a good chat with them and I met up with a, a chief designer, Ian Hall, who's one of my old employees as well, a long time ago, and they're pretty happy where they got to. Uh, the thing about it is they have a planned development process in place that's going to take them up to the first race. New that's a mad Spaniard on a uh, motorcycle, by the way, but he's still on board. Um, yeah, it's going to take them up to the to the first uh, race of Europe in Barcelona when they come back here. So they've got a plan for that with parts coming and that's going to be a big help for them because you've got sort of continuity of budget, they've got enough money to do it this year. So they can plan stuff and uh, so the car they have here right now isn't, isn't what will be in Australia, it's what gets them out testing and allows them to just make sure everything works as they think it should work because that's very important. It's, it's alright designing all this stuff away from the, the racetrack but it's got to work at the racetrack. Definitely. Now one of the biggest things we've seen this season is the change in front wing dimensions and greater simplicity to try and boost that overtaking uh, product on track. Now, you've had a look at racing points. What would you say are the key things to look out for there? Well, the interesting thing is, is there's sort of three different philosophies, I suppose, at the minute. There's what Mercedes have done, which is more or less a simplified front wing. It, it still carries the flap curvature as normal out, out towards the end plate. Then there's Ferrari who drop the flaps off as it goes towards the end plate, sort of revealing more front tyre. And then for, um, Force India, I almost said, but Racing Point, <laughs> they're, uh, they're in, in between. They drop it off a bit, but not as much as Ferrari, a bit more than Mercedes. So it's going to be interesting to see because it's such a visual thing. It will affect the what we call the outwash and the inwash of that front wing as to how much air goes between the tyre and the chassis and how much goes around the outside. But I think more importantly, it's something to do with the fact of when you steer the car through a corner, you know, that big front wheel affects the aerodynamics quite dramatically. So you're trying to minimise that effect and somebody's got it right and somebody's got it wrong. And we've seen on the racing point and on the Haas as well, um, the foot plate on the front wing end plate, that ends a little bit earlier than the end plate does itself. Yeah. What's the usual effect of that? Is it to manage a vortex a little bit earlier or does it have some kind of other effect? Well, it's to manage it, but it's also to allow it to, to, to do what it's got to do. That vortex gets caught up with the, the airflow that's getting displaced by the tyre turning on the ground. Um, because you know the airflow can't go through the tire, it has to go around it or over the top of it, and where it's sort of the tire is turning on the ground, it gets squirted around the outside and around the inside, and that vortex is to try and take most of that tire squirt around the outside. So if you stop it too late, the vortex won't pick that flow up. You need to stop it at the right point so that the, the vortex, the spinning of the vortex, picks that airflow up and takes it with it. And we've also had a nice little look at the intakes as well, it's quite shrunken side pods and quite a large intake on the top, sort of oval shaped yeah. almost. What is the main reason for that would you say? Well there's three sort of cooling inlets that the cars have, there's one each side of the driver, the radiator intakes as we call them, and then there's the, top, the one at the top, the airbox intake, and that airbox intake feeds the turbo as well as, some of them use it for cooling the hydraulics, some of them use it for cooling the intercooler. So the flow through there is used for other things. On the, on the um, racing point, we see it's, it's got a bit bigger this year. Um, so they're doing a bit more up there, which means that they can have the, the side intakes a little bit smaller. Now the side intakes, the size of them really does affect the air flow around the side pods because not all the air that goes in those ducts can go through the radiator at all speeds. So at a certain speed, the radiator blocks up and that air has to spill around the side. And you want to manage that air spillage as, much, as well as possible. So they're just playing around with the areas that, that has least deficit on the car for when you get the uh, excess flow that you have to manage. We've also seen uh, the brand new Alfa Romeo <coughs> Formula One car, the C38, formerly the Sauber team. Uh, it tested on Valentine's Day in the special livery and it's now been rolled out by race drivers uh, Kimi Raikkonen and Antonio Giovinazzi. Now Gary, you've also had a look at the Alfa as well. It's a very yeah. complex looking car, uh, yeah, yeah. interesting front end, mm -hmm. very complicated barge boards and a six-way intake on the top. So what are the main things to take away from this design? I think if you look at their front wing assembly, they've they've gone one direction further than anybody else. They've got this, the flaps dropping down very early. The outside of the wing becomes more of a horizontal uh, five-element component. Um, 
So they're, they're the most dramatic one as far as the visual uh, package is concerned. If you go to the barge board area, they've done quite a nice job of how the barge boards integrate with the front corner of the floor. And that they, they've sort of got a, a separate diffuser on that front corner of the floor, creating downforce from that area. So they're making some front downforce in that area, which sort of substitutes for the loss of the front downforce from the front wing. And it also helps the, the diffuser to make sure that the, the, the diffuser working on the underfloor is actually giving you downforce further back. So they've, they've, they've done a good job. They've actually gone around the car quite well. It's a, it's a big development for them. And, you know, they are, as you say, Sauber, now Alfa Romeo. They have signed Kimi Räikkönen. And so we know Kimi can race at the front. So they've got no hiding place this year. They've got to, they've got to do the job because Kimi should be at the front with the others. Will he be at the front? They hope so. And we've also seen, uh, well, you join us on lunchtime, so there's a little bit of a break going on. And we went into lunchtime with Sebastian Vettel on top of the timesheets after about 70 plus laps. Uh, quite an interesting, fantastic almost performance from Ferrari this morning. Um, yeah, what, what can you analyse behind that? Well, uh, you know, as you were saying, we're here in Barcelona, but one thing is we're here in sunny Barcelona. Yeah. Last year at this time we were here in a snowy Barcelona, so <laughs> the tracks changed quite a lot, tyres are different. But last year, after eight days of testing, the fastest time was a 117.2. And this morning, Vettel's done a 118.1. So he's only nine tenths off last year's best time. They are actually expecting the, this year's car to be something like 1.2 to 1.5 seconds slower than last year's car because of the, of the uh, regulation changes on the front wing. But actually, I was speaking to one of the guys this morning, and uh, they feel that their car is working better than, on the track than their simulation predicted. So everybody comes here to make sure your car is working as well as you predicted and they seem to have got a little bit of an advantage. That can be good or bad because you still want to make sure you know why that's happening to allow you to develop further. But a very good morning's work from Ferrari, as, as from everybody. But once you go from Ferrari, I think Sergio Perez was, was second fastest in the, in the racing point, 1.8 seconds slower. His best time's a, a 19.9. And then from there on, it's a tenth of a second here and there. Bottas and the Mercedes, he was third fastest, but you know they never show their true colours really, to be honest. And I think Lewis is driving this afternoon, so maybe we'll see some action from him. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Gary, for your time. And uh, well, you can join all of the latest information on the testing here at Barcelona from autosport.com and motorsport.com and follow Autosport Live for all of the updates going on here at Barcelona.